Today, I'm sharing a mini closet overhaul. We have this decent sized extra closet in our bedroom that has never been used for anything other than random odds and ends. There used to be an old bureau in here that sat empty along with some spare runners. So the space was not being used to its potential to say the least. It's great that we had this space and figured it was time to put it to use. The goal for this closet was to capitalize on vertical storage, make it organized, functional, and of course aesthetically pleasing to house mostly storage items that are currently being kept in the basement or other bedroom closets. I originally wanted to go with the IKEA PAX custom shelving system for very built-in look, but decided to use IKEA's new bow axle shelving, I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly, to save a significant amount of installation time and money. It's an affordable alternative and the system itself is very customizable. IKEA recently discontinued their Algot system, which was the bow axle's predecessor. I did notice that this new system is quite a bit slimmer than the Algot. Everything metal like the suspension rails and brackets are just a little bit thinner, which I actually really like. Like all of IKEA's closet systems, there is a planner on their website that helps you measure and design the space. Important details that were taken into account included leaving about 30 inches of empty space in the bottom to store suitcases, drawers to store running clothes, and open shelves on top to store both seasonal and holiday clothing, aspirational clothing that doesn't quite fit as well, and a spot for seasonal sheets, pillows, and duvets. With the planner, I was able to configure a setup with open space in the bottom, a shelf for running shoes, four drawers, and then three shelves at the top, which totaled $160, which I thought was very reasonable. Shipping was $199, so I opted for the click and collect option and made the two hour drive to our nearest Ikea to pick the items up. A pit stop to the container store on the way back was also in order to pick up a few bins to store the clothing in. The setup was very straightforward. First, the centermost point of the wall was found and marked, and then after getting it leveled, a pilot hole was drilled in the center of the top horizontal suspension rail. I then put an anchor in and screwed only the center of the suspension rail in so that the other horizontal suspension rail could be leveled. Once both horizontal suspension rails were leveled, pilot holes were drilled in the remaining four spots and then plugged with quarter inch anchors as well. I then screwed both horizontal suspension rails in, having using a total of six screws. All three vertical upright pieces were hung off of the horizontal suspension rails, leaving approximately half an inch from the baseboard at the bottom. Next, all of the shelves and drawers were placed exactly where they needed to go. Do this before you screw the vertical upright pieces into the wall. If you do the opposite, you could run into a problem where they aren't level and the shelves won't line up correctly. Once the shelving is in place, if needed, shift the vertical upright pieces so that everything is centered and then drill pilot holes in the vertical upright pieces. I only added two per vertical piece and that was sufficient for what this shelving unit needed to hold. Anchors were once again added and then the vertical upright pieces were screwed in place. All of the shelves and drawers were then reattached to the system. What's most exciting is that this entire closet was found space for us. We had never utilized it to its potential. The suitcases were moved from the basement up to this bedroom closet, which opened up an entire shelf down in the basement for more important items like holiday decorations. The suitcases fit perfectly in this new closet and it now saves a trip to the basement every time a suitcase needs packed and unpacked. What's also great about this system is that if in the future more shelf or drawer space is needed, the suitcases can be moved back down to the basement and we would just need to order new shelves to snap into place. Shoe shelves were added in next to hold running shoes, which I do go through quite frequently. The shoe shelf is made of metal and has ridges unlike the other shelves. Before the running shoes had this dedicated space, they were piled on top of my sweaters and my closet. Seeing them presented like this and in this orderly manner makes me excited to get up and go on a run. The four drawers contain everything running related. I had run, no pun intended, out of space in my bureau and had moved these items into one of the guest rooms and it was time to find them a more permanent spot. Every time I run a race, I usually end up with a new shirt. Those are all kept in this bottom drawer. Tank tops are kept in the middle in a scuba, scuba container. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong as well. Next to that is a drawer filled with more running tees along with sports bras and running headpieces and other miscellaneous running items. Leggings and shorts are kept in this top drawer and the drawer next to it has my growing collection of compression socks. These eye level shelves hold extra pillows, blankets, sheet sets, etc. We keep it pretty simple with sheets and have two sets for each bed, a summer set and a winter set. 
Right now I have our summer sheets in storage using one of the oldest labelers in my collection. I printed up simple king full and pillow labels for the shelves. It just adds that extra level of excitement. The next two shelves are dedicated to seasonal and aspirational clothing. Four weather tight bins from the container store were used to contain everything. Of course, no job is complete without adding some labels, so I went to town adding those to each of the bins. They were cut with the Silhouette Cameo and affixed with good old contact paper. Transfer paper works great as well. I'm extremely anal about labels being affixed centered and balanced. It will drive me nuts if they are off by a little bit, so I use painter's tape to line it up from the bottom and then use a tape measure to make sure I am somewhere close to being centered. Big, bulky sweaters and vests are being kept in the two seasonal bins because they take up a significant amount of storage. There's a bin strictly for holiday clothing only. All of our ridiculously awesome holiday sweaters are kept in here along with other extra sparkly items that we probably wouldn't wear any other season of the year. And then the last bin has special items that don't quite fit as well as they used to and would be great to fit into one day. That's a wrap on my first IKEA bow axle install. I have a new space for our luggage, running gear, linens, and seasonal clothing, and I'm absolutely thrilled with how it turned out and can't believe I haven't been taking advantage of this space in this closet. I'm already brainstorming my next project using the same system. Out of curiosity, I would love to know if you've ever used the IKEA Algot system or the new IKEA bow axle system.